Okay, so again, some of you think that I should apologize. I will for good measure say that if I ever treat anybody unfairly, which I am blameless and I reject the possibility of, but for good measure, I will say that if that is the case, then I apologize. However, okay, what people are doing is beyond despicable. And when I look at them, I can't, you know, every day I'm astounded by what I'm looking at. Those of you who've been watching my videos for a while, you know I have maybe, oh, maybe a hundred pictures by now printed out. Cost me quite a bit of money in ink. I have a bunch of bumper stickers too. Cost me like $15 per bumper sticker, including shipping and handling, something like this. $14, $15, $13, $14, $15. You know, I spend quite a bit of money on this because I am fucking astounded, ladies and gentlemen, at what I see when I look at people. It's like a mix between nerds and demons and cowards and groupies, right? I write down their characteristics. They say they're ditzy, they're dull, they're shallow. They're rebellious in a way that they're trying to play it off. They're like trying to act like they're cute little Care Bears, little Power Rangers at times, okay? They're LGBT-ish on a spectrum, including conservatives. They edit my pictures to try to make it so that I resemble them. I am fucking astounded at what I see. Like in Revelation when he saw the whore riding the beast. They're drunk off the blood of the saints. They have no care for the righteous who died for what is right. When they are trying to impress people, especially if they're from a different tribe or race than them, they'll say, well, this guy from my tribe or race did this, this, and this, and you don't know nothing about that, okay? But they have no true respect for them, or they would have done the same thing themselves to some degree, right? So they've chosen the white oppressor's path, and then they turn around and act like they have a reason to be proud, proudly, while you're in the spirit of being controlled by money and begging for your life to the new world order, you know, sniveling, you know, on your knees, so to speak, you know, figuratively speaking, you're like, please don't hurt us, Mr. Big Brother, Mr. Corporate State, please, oh, we'll sleep with you, we'll do whatever you say, we'll turn our whole family into demons for you, oh, and like a bunch of bitches. It is astounding that people aren't just that cowardly, but that completely fucking retarded. And then quite often they act like they're smart. They even act like they're more intelligent than I am at times. Just fucking idiots. Anyway, where was I? Um, so I was talking about the lightning. Okay, for the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. Again, it's the sky, right? Sky law. Sky law king. Right? The gate. What, what is keeping people out of heaven? It is the spirit of righteousness and justice that cannot be harmed. Let's, let's look at this thing here. Let's look at it scientifically for a second. If you could get rid of the, the, the existence of righteousness and justice in the universe, wouldn't the whole universe collapse? Because before people, before life was there on earth, wasn't righteousness and justice. So it's something that's in the unseen realm that cannot be harmed. Its source is God. It cannot be gotten rid of. If you were to get rid of it, the whole universe would end, your life would end, done. Okay? But it can't be done. So people are like, hey, we're going to team up with the devil and we're going to take on... And they're fucking retarded. They're some kind of trailer trash idiots, some kind of Michael Aquino, Anton LaVey kind of weirdos, oddballs, goofballs, emos. They're like an emo with a gothic theme. Look at the, look at goths comparing to emos and tell me that being a Satanist is fucking smart. It's fucking retarded. It's pathetic. It's being some kind of sniveling, self-loathing worm with no heart whatsoever. Pretending to be important. It's just fucking stupid. It's like a weird gay serial killer in a Greek theater going, look at me, you know, or in a thong on ice skates saying, yeah, I'm important. It, it is fucking pathetic. Anyway. Okay, but first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Why? Where does righteous indignation come from? Well, it certainly comes from trying to hold these people's hands. Okay, now, Satanists interpret this differently than I do, I'd imagine. And there's all kinds of different Satanists. I'd imagine that some of them interpret it as that to them. Now, I, I do not believe this. Okay, I can't stress that enough. To evil people, they believe that Christ is also the devil. To evil people, they believe that. They say the winnowing fork in hand, some of these evil people, to some of these evil people, that is, they believe that Christ is then 
he then gets pissed off or something, or he has some kind of transformation and turns into the devil and then rules on earth. It is a laughable explanation. Okay, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. Where would this te temple be for me? Where do you think my throne uh, uh, would be? You think the earth becomes uh, God's new throne? That's fucking retarded. You see what I'm saying? There's people who actually believe. I remember when I first heard it, someone said, well, heaven comes to earth. I'm like, what are you talking about? Earth is defiled. That's a stupid explanation. No, no. Read the Bible. Read. They're all arguing with me, right? That was before I really zoomed in on Isaiah. And after that, I really zoomed in on Isaiah. I went read it again and again, took notes again and again, key parts again and again. It says earth is going to be completely destroyed. It says the earth is defiled. They even used the same word that I did. I said, that can't happen because the earth is defiled. And Isaiah said, the earth is defiled. It, it sinks never to rise again. The Lord is mad at the earth and he's going to destroy the earth. It's going to be consumed by his angry fire, his, his consuming fire. Okay. All right. Um, but first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it, as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. Okay, so they're eating and drinking. So all these people are like, well, I'm, I'm not doing bad right now. You see how it's like he's answering their arguments ahead of time. And people in the church, I'd imagine, encourage people to say things like Freemasons are into reading the Bible. They, they helped create sayings, uh, excuse me, sayings um, that are obnoxious. Like some rich person saying, well, it works for me. And they kind of smile and they act important. Right? That's pathetic, right? And so we see that people are eating and drinking and marrying, right? They're married, right? They're not supposed to be wicked and being married. And then the flood comes and wipes them out. So it is with all you wicked people marrying some model, marrying some pretty, some pretty chick, some chick who's dumb enough to reject obeying the Son of God. And you're like, I'm going to make her my wife. If someone who was actually a Christian, they thought of themselves as a Christian or was a Christian, they even thought of themselves as a Christian and they were serious about it. They would not reject the idea that I'm Christ. They would see the logic in it immediately and they would obey, right? And they would not marry a female that doesn't obey God through me, especially if they rejected the idea of submitting as someone who I would choose to be my wife, you know, submitting to be, to present themselves to be selected or not selected uh, to be my wife. This is one of the most obvious things in history. Read Psalm 45 again and again, type it up yourself, write it down yourself, print it out, underline, circle, highlight, take notes, put footnotes, etc. Okay. Again, the mighty warrior is said to be the most excellent of men, riding forth in the cause of truth, justice, and humility. This is also one of many, many scriptures that overkills that the lightning is the warrior spirit of God, like uh, Revelation 19 and Isaiah 42, 13. The Lord will march out like a champion, right? How does the Lord return? He marches out like a champion. He he, he wraps himself in zeal, Isaiah says. He uh, um, he he uh, he, ra he raises the battle cry. Okay. He triumphs over his enemies. How? In principle, right? Jesus said, "I have overcome the world." Did he conquer the world and have everyone tied up and beat down and killed and so on and so forth? No. He triumphed over the world. In principle, he said, I overcame the world. I transcended the world. I conquered the world. Okay. So, where are we here? Okay. It will not just be like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the housetop with possessions inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night, two people will be on in one bed. One will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken, and the other left. Where, Lord, they asked. He replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. So again, in Matthew, it also says, Matthew 10, whoever finds their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. So quite often we have to couple these scriptures to see what they're getting at. It's another thing I don't like about the Bible, especially when you're doing it by yourself. It's, it can be quite uh, time consuming when life is short and time is precious. Time is of the essence, heart, core. Anyway, so 
we see that where the vultures gather, okay, the people, nations go down to the realm of the dead, excuse me, the wicked go down to the realm of the dead, all the nations that forget God. So what has happened according to this? Uh, what, what will happen? What is happening now? Okay, people are following folly instead of wisdom, which is leading them to find their lives in this world. And instead of scrambling and dropping everything to rally and obey God through me, which is God's main command. The real reason why the Son of Man came was to destroy the devil's work. Revelation 18, come out of her, my people, so you will not share in her sins. He said, come rally to me, no matter what you're doing. And if you have a, you make a million dollars a year and you'll lose your job, rally to me. If you have 10 kids and you're in, you're, you're in a, a, a nasty divorce and you'll lose them, if you don't rally to me, rally to me. And if you work for the government, if you rally to me, they're going to assassinate your family. Rally to me. The wicked become a, a ransom for the righteous. You must accept God's judgment in regards to your family, in regards to what you must do, no matter how right you think you are. That's why it's called the army of God. A chain of command. I am the king of kings, the highest ranking person that ever was, that is, that ever will be. After me, after I die, there will be no one. Seven seals. Seven deadly sins, if you will, right? You'll be sealed in hell. You'll be that wickedness in Zechariah, that wicked woman, that Babylonian woman who's, who's sealed in the basket. And you'll be sealed out of heaven, damned to hell. The living water will not come to you anymore. It talks about one of the most confusing parts here I'd say is two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Now, it was possible at the time when he wrote it that it could play out as some women end up coming to me, some don't. The Satanists who control cowards who let themselves be controlled have acted in a way that is so pathetic, so self-destructive, so disrespectful of their own families and their own ways, just so pitiful that I do not believe any females are going to rally and obey God through me. They say two will be grinding. Uh, so what are they referring to? Right? What is the, the hidden message here? Two women will be grinding grain together. Right? Grain. Right? The bread of God. And shifting the, you know, the, 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 sifting the, the tares and the wheat. Okay? And so on and so forth. They're separating the sheep and the goats. Okay? Those females who are in the spirit of... Um, Jerusalem in the sky, which is referred to as their mother, okay, are taken. Those who are in the spirit of the world, okay, are, are left behind. How do we know? We know because of rally, right? The real alpha point, the rally point. If they don't rally to me and obey God through me, they're in the spirit of rebellion. The divine verdict is on my lips. When I say rally, which is how, you know, it's the way to repentance, right? Narrow is the way, right? And if you don't, you go to hell. If you don't rally to me and obey and make it clear, you obey. No wordplay, no secret society nonsense. Then you're going to hell. That is the divine verdict. And people don't say, well, do you really think that's, you know, you're, I, I, I'll allow for you to say, for you to ask why that is. If you don't understand why that is. Okay. But I will not allow for you to break that verdict. Okay. If you do, you and your offspring are going to hell. Nobody's supposed to repro reproduce on this planet ever again, okay? You, you as uh, mankind did it to yourselves. In your symbiotic planet, in your symbiotic relationships, you did it to yourselves. And you are in the spirit of the woman in rebellion, Mount Sinai, Sin Alpha I of this world. You're in the spirit of Cain. Can Cain argue that he's a son of Adam and God made Adam himself, therefore he has a covenant with God? No. You are in the spirit of rebellion. You are like your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. And when he lies, he speaks his native tongue. When he rebels, he does his native actions. And the reason why I came here is to separate those who are worthy, those who are destined to be separated because God sent me to them, and the dogs, the less than dog scum, who are in the spirit of the devil, who are headed for eternal punishment. Their identity is scum. Their parents were too stupid to, re to, to not reproduce scum. They raised them to be scum. They were destined to be scum. And they were an abomination that is going to suffer forever.